Hi. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us here on SA Today. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has left uh, many individuals in, fi in a financial fix. Even though they may have not contracted the virus, but they have, however, been victims of decisions made by companies during the time of the pandemic. Retrenchments, uh, role reductions and even working hours being cut resulted in major salary setbacks. How can this be addressed? I think that's the big question. Let's speak now to Devon Munsani. He is uh, the CEO of uh, the iChef Training Institute and he joins me now live via Skype. Good afternoon to you, Devon. Thank you so much for coming through. Good afternoon, Pelisa. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much indeed. So firstly, how can we do this uh, impact assessment on different workers on how the lockdown and the virus itself may have affected their lives? Well, each organization, it would be it would be relatively easy to be able to assess how they've been impacted in what way. So some organizations we're detecting within the, the space that we're working in, which is the learning and development field, we're noticing that some numbers are into the hundreds and then other numbers you're looking at even within the thousands, within larger organizations. So where we started off in January, as an example, in terms of where we're sitting now, you would have seen Section 18, you would have seen lots of different individuals who were permanently employed and happily so, but now completely uprooted. So skills audits are taking place and one of the easiest ways to detect it is when you do your skills audit now coming up in October and then you do a complete assessment of an organization to see exactly what the carnage has been. And I have to say, it has been pretty dismal with a lot of the businesses that we're engaging with. Mm. And, and with that skills audit, would one be correct to say that even more jobs may be shared when companies realize that the skills that we have now, we cannot retain going forward? It could very well be, and it differs from organization to organization. As we know, some sectors have been incredibly hard hit as a result of the lockdown and, and just not being able to generate the revenue that they were generating previously. So we're talking tourism, we're talking the hospitality sector, we're talking about that customer interface sector. So those organizations will be hard hit. Some role sharing has happened within certain organizations. So they made people redundant and then the people who remained were the ones who were sort of sharing the responsibilities that belonged to that individual. It might happen if companies don't recover effectively and efficiently in the next few months, it might be that there may be a second wave of retrenchments coming. Mm. And, and when, when staff returns to work, how can one or how can companies sort of boost their morale whilst acknowledging that the companies themselves have been under a lot of distress, but individuals as well coming with their baggages from home? So it's a conundrum, isn't it? So how do companies go about ensuring that as much as they try to recover as well, but they also take care of the psychological, emotional, and maybe perhaps financial well-being of their employees? Mm. You see, the, what the frontline concern has been with most corporates in the last month or two was becoming COVID ready. So uh, making sure that they're compliant and making sure that organizations are ready when the doors open and when the employees start to return. So there wasn't much being done in the employee wellness and engagement space. So the focal point was just being healthy and safe in terms of not being able to contract any bugs and viruses, which I think most organizations have complied with. When we go to shopping centers, when we visit different companies, we are seeing very proactive nature as far as that's concerned. However, wellness programs and, and different initiatives as far as counseling and speaking to depression and anxiety and even finance planning for most people who've taken a massive setback and for those who've been retrenched, not much of that has been taking place. You know, rightfully so, we can't only penalize organizations for not putting this at the forefront of thinking, but now's the time for them to start revisiting these employee value propositions models and to be talking to individuals within business about depression, about anxiety, and very important for how to maintain and manage their emotional well-being going forward. Yeah. We are going to see programs. Yeah. Mm, I think you're correct because we recently had a lecturer here on the show who was basically saying that everything has been about how 
uh, institutions will comply with COVID-19 re regulations, how students uh, should be made safe, how their academic year should be saved as well. But nothing has been said about us as the actual uh, employees of uh, institutions. So I think you're correct to say that uh, a lot of companies have not really taken this into consideration that much. But also importantly, Devin, is uh, how will it feel to go back to work when you've been working from home for over five months and now it's back to office, back to reality, you, 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 it's a different um, scenario altogether. How does one go about adjusting? I can speak from a perspective where we've been training a lot of people within the hygiene and cleaning sector. And our facilitators have been going in and engaging with these learners. What has become pretty obvious is that morale is quite low. So not just staying at home and being comfortable in your safe space and now going back into the work. Remember, there's a lot of uh, emotional anxiety that comes with returning back into the workplace, not being certain how long I'm actually going to be staying. So we're seeing an, 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 an influx of different emotions with these learners, and learners are asking questions that they would never have asked in January. I mean, in January, we were all stable, we were comfortable, February... And then all of a sudden, this happened. So even the conversations that are taking place in the training rooms and within these organizations, they are slanting more towards how do I cope now, emotional well-being, and what sort of advice do facilitators and teachers within organizations have for these individuals. So conversations like that are going to be happening. And I'm going to encourage these individuals to take the conversation back home as well so that they can speak to their family members and friends friends about it. The more emotional support we get, the better equipped you are to deal in the corporate space. All right. But then employers themselves, shouldn't they face this not all, all at once? It, it's very funny that we had this conversation this morning with my producers who were saying that they don't think they'll be able to work five consecutive days because of the arrangements for the past five uh, five months where we, we, we came in like two days in, two days out. So going back to the actual five days, uh, five consecutive days of the week working might, you know, uh, spell some problems for them. So what is it that um, uh, employers themselves uh, should do just to make sure that even if we go back to the normal schedules as, uh, as, as employees, it's, it's not, you know, faced in all at once? Mm. You see, employers should be very proactive as far as this is concerned because habits tend to form. We're talking about a formation of habits over a few months. So there will be the level of reluctance because people have become very comfortable with Zoom. People have become comfortable now with WhatsApp communication and being able to submit, submit reports online. And uh, the, the, the need for, for team meetings and other engagements like this is becoming less and less. So I, I really think organizations take a proactive approach in terms of desensitizing these individuals, especially those in the customer service industry. Things will rehabilitate. We will see airlines open. We will see more tourists coming into South Africa, and organizations thus have to respond to these demands. So if we're going to become too complacent, and I don't want to say uh, lethargic about it, but if we become very complacent, it's going to be that much more difficult for us to kickstart ourselves. So if organizations are going to be proactive and putting together training programs to empower these individuals in terms of how they can cope with these different uh, strategies moving forward, then it will help them when the busy season start to, to kick in. So we need to exchange those pyjamas for our suits now. All right, thank you so much for coming through. Uh, that's Devin Munsami, he's the CEO of uh, the iShef Training Institute, of course, uh, talking to us about the many individuals uh, going back to their workplace after that five months of break. What then happened?